Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna get back to the basics and talk about how a fish finder works. There are generally two components to a fish finder, the head unit and the transducer. And the transducer here is the part that sits in the water and is connected via a cable to the head unit. And the head unit is of course the part that most anglers have their faces glued to while they're fishing. On a basic level, all a fish finder does is send out sound waves from the transducer, which is why Sometimes fish finders are referred to as sounders. To illustrate this, let's have a look at my poorly made animation here. All the blue is the water column. The brown at the bottom is the lake floor. And right here is your boat, your kayak, your deeper sonar ball, whatever you got. So as you're traveling along, the transducer is sending out hundreds of thousands of sonar waves per second, or pings. These sound waves travel through the water column and bounce off anything in its path, fish, rocks, brush piles, the lake floor, literally anything, and back up to the transducer. The shape of this sound wave is roughly a cone, which starts out small at the transducer and gradually gets bigger the further it travels down through the water. There's a bit more to it, but I'll cover that in a little bit. Before we continue, if at the end of this video you learned something, please consider subscribing to my channel. It means a lot to me and it helps me out. Anyways, let's bash on. So once the sound waves are received back to the transducer, that information is sent to the head unit where it processes the data and displays it in pretty colors on your screen. While going over this section of the water, your sonar screen will look something like this. Pretty boring. But as soon as your transducer passes over Barry the bass here, your head unit will start to draw a new return. Assuming you're not using any kind of fish ID function, which you shouldn't be, an arch will be drawn on your screen. The reason why fish appear as arches is because the sonar returns from the head and the tail are weaker, as they're a little bit further away from the transducer, while the middle of Barry, where he is the largest and thus slightly closer to the transducer, sends back the strongest returns. Now let's talk about beam width for a minute. And it's not as complicated as you might think, but it all boils down to the frequencies at which the transducer is sending the sound waves. Lower frequencies will have a wider beam width, but less detailed returns, and higher frequencies will have narrower beam widths but more detailed returns. This is because the rate at which sound waves are sent is measured in kilohertz, or cycles per second. Every one kilohertz is a thousand cycles per second. So the more cycles per second your transducer can send and receive, the more detailed an image you're going to have. For example, if you've got your transducer set to transmit at 77 kilohertz, or 77,000 cycles per second, the cone angle might be somewhere around 45 degrees. This means that if you were sitting above 15 feet of water, your cone would cover 15 feet of the bottom around your transducer, or seven and a half feet omnidirectional. If you were in 30 feet of water, your coverage area is 30 feet of the bottom surface, or 15 feet omnidirectional. Not every transducer uses the same cone angle for the same frequencies, so check your manual to be sure. The formula to calculate this is 2 times depth times 10, the cone angle, divided by 2. So again, in 30 feet of water, it would be 2 times 30 times 1045, divided by 2, which equals 30. If you really wanted, you could use this formula to calculate exactly how much of the bottom your cone angle is seeing at any depth, so long as you know the cone angle of the frequency you're using. These principles apply to all kinds of sonar modes and frequencies. Modes like down imaging and side imaging use much higher frequencies, which is why they're able to return much more detailed images than their lower frequency counterpart, the traditional 2D sonar. And that is the absolute basics of how a fish finder works. There's a lot more that goes into it, but a lot of it is just math and how your head unit is able to convert a 3D image onto a 2D screen. And But that's not stuff we need to get into in this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you like this video. And I'll see you in the next one.